No Terran battleship has ever fallen to the foe. They have been wounded, sometimes so severely as to warrant decommissioning, but not one has ever been abandoned, captured or lost in the void. Deus Array, God of Wrath, was the first true battleship. She had haunted the dreams of Quavalar Voidsman for over 60 years. Lesser vessels had surrendered to the mere sight of her, rather than risk the fury of her guns. An entire squadron of heavy cruisers was tasked solely with hunting her down. I ask you, how could Deus Array ignore such a challenge to her might? The fleet's anchorage was Tynos Free. A plan was made to bait them out, to send a Q-ship along the Spinwood Front and bring the fleet to battle. Then the real Deus Array would make an extremely dangerous in-system jump to the gas giant, and hit the anchorage. The plan should have worked. The hunting pack was far out of position, and the Terrans made their jump flawlessly. Yet rather than an empty station, Deus Array found four Quavalar battleships and their escorts present for repair and resupply. The captain of the Deus Array ordered an immediate withdrawal. She loosened a single spiteful volley with every gun and torpedo to wound the station and cripple a dry dock battleship as she broke off and burned half for safety. Frigates and cruisers hounded her all the way out. On the bridge, Captain Merlin and his staff performed the cold calculations of battle. They could outrun the enemy battleships, but not the smaller craft. They could outfight any of those ships three to one, but there were six vessels bearing down. Every option was considered, and every hypothetical ended the same way. Deus Array would not make it. If they ran, they would be run down. If they stood and fought, they would die. Surrender was the only way to spare her 4,000 crew from death. Surrender is not an option, Wing Commander Lee insisted. Not one of our battleships has been claimed, and I'll be damned if it's ours that's the first to fall. Then what do you suggest? The captain asked. Lee glanced at the displays around the chamber, taking in the tactical data of the evolving situation. Scramble Terra's ravens, he said. It would not be enough. Not enough, Lee echoed. Our bombers have enough firepower to blow four cruisers to hell. Between our payloads and the ship's main guns, we could win this. The captain shook his head. Not with battleships running us down. If we turn and fight, we'd never outrun them. And they must have made us by now. They'll hammer us to dust the moment their main guns get into range. I don't see the issue, sir. The issue, Commander, is we have to maintain full burn for the jump point. Your bombers will not make it back. Lee's face hardened. Like I said, I don't see the issue. A look of shock came across the captain's face. No, he whispered. It's the only choice, sir. Sacrifice the wing to save the ship. Condemn 300 men and women to die here, so the rest live? No, I refuse. Lee sighed. It's called triage, sir. It's called murder, Commander. There is a world of difference between ordering men into battle knowing they might die, and knowing they will die. I refuse to cross that line. I would rather this ship be dragged back to the Quavi homeworld as a prize, than give an order that callous. Sir, the wing is grounded. That's an order. Wing Commander Lee snapped a salute. Yes, sir. Permission to leave the bridge, sir. No, you'll do something damn stupid. You can stay here. That's also an order. The captain turned back to the display. He heard Lee step back from the main console. Then consider this a mutiny, sir. And he marched for the hatch. Commander! Captain Merlin turned sharply, but Lee did not pause. One of the marines went to stop the officer, but Merlin raised his hand. Let him go. Lee summoned his wing as he headed for the bay. Most of the pilots were already there, fully suited and chomping at the bit to scramble. They jumped to their feet and snapped salutes as their commanding officer drew near. At ease, Lee called. I'll come straight from the bridge. Listen up, all of you. Deck crews included. I want to make sure everyone present knows exactly what has transpired. The bustling deck fell silent. Pilots, mechanics, flight control officers and all of the other assembled servicemen and servicewomen gave Commander Lee their full attention. As you must know by now, we are running for the jump point with a fleet hot on our heels. The captain believes surrender is our only option, as we are unlikely to make it to the jump with so many hostiles bearing down upon us. A murmur ran through the pilots, low and full of fury. Lee smiled at that. The only hope Deus Array has to escape is if we, 
The 117th Terran Air Wing can cripple or destroy the four enemy cruisers. The remaining two frigates will stand against the battleship's guns, and that'll give us all the time we need to get out and jump clear. However, that would be a suicide mission, and the captain refuses to order you to die so he might live. Let me say again, he added, shutting at full volume. The entire air wing has been ordered to remain on board. Any ship scrambling will be considered a mutineer. The rage boiling off his pilots was palpable. Lee savoured it as he turned on his heel and marched towards the deck officer, a smartly dressed woman in her mid-thirties. Is my ship prepped for launch? The entire wing is ready to go, sir, she replied. I intend to launch and take the fight to the enemy. Do you plan to stop me? The woman glanced about, looking quite puzzled. Then she said aloud, Someone informed the bridge that we've had a malfunction in the launch catapult. Wing Commander Lee's craft has just been flung into space. Do you have any other faulty catapults? Squadron Commander O'Connell asked, appearing at Lee's shoulder. I have a feeling they're all faulty, sir, the deck officer replied. Lee turned to his wingmates. They were all stood up and blood hungry. This is a one-way trip, he said coldly. I know you. I know all of you. Every man and woman here have loved ones. Parents, siblings, spouses, children. You will never see them again if you do this. We're wasting precious time, sir, O'Connell replied, in a tone that made it clear the matter was settled. Lee mounted up. The whole wing did. Fighter escorts thundered out of the tubes first, spat out of the ship's underside. The deck crew cleared the hangar as the port and starboard doors of the fly-through hangar slid open, and one by one the launch catapults of the bombers discharged to hurl their craft out at bone-crushing speeds. They banked around and split into four raiding parties, each burning hard for one of the cruisers. Lee's force took the furthest target. It would be the hardest to reach, for the more time they spent up in the black, the more likely they were to be shot down. Behind and to his right, the tactical officer relayed critical information, warning of inbound interceptors, advising course corrections, and updating on the progress of the wing. O'Connell and his squadron were the first into the fray, gunning point blank towards the cruiser, and firing at the very last moment. Three blinding flashes lit up in the void, and the tactical officer relayed the confirmation. The Quevalar cruiser had been broken in half by the hits. Escort squadron, what's your status? He asked, as his screen lit up with contacts. This is Pinion 6. We're giving them hell, Commander. Pinion lead has gone dark. We've burned about half of the fuel and ammo, but we're going nowhere. They'll break before we do. Point defense turrets began to roar, as Lee and his ships closed on their prey. The ship on his left wing took a direct hit, and came apart in a brief, fiery burst. Another salvo ripped two more bombers to shreds. Pinion squadron, we're getting mauled here. Can you spare anyone to suppress those turrets? We're on it, sir. It was the last he'd ever hear of Pinion 6, or anyone from Pinion Squadron. The bomber's turret gunner called out contacts as enemy fighters came into range, but the cruiser's guns were silent. Begin attack run! All ships, fire at will! Be ready to- He choked. The air suddenly torn from his lungs. There was a painful ringing in his ears, and somewhere an alarm was blaring. He tried to breathe, and liquid agony surged through his body. Looking down, he saw a jagged chunk of canopy sticking through his chest. He saw the gaping wound in his cockpit, and through the fog of pain and shock connected the two. He turned slowly, glancing towards his tactical officer. A headless body sat in the chair, with a smoking hole in the bulkhead behind him. The bomber shook violently. Lee slammed his eyes shut as the cruiser ahead was hit by multiple warheads. He punched up the tactical display on his secondary console. Two cruisers were dead. A third had taken massive engine damage and fallen out of formation. All surviving members of the Terror's Ravens were swarming the fourth. Somehow, Lee pulled his craft around and burned hard towards the final mark. It was getting hard to focus. It took a lifetime to punch up the long-range scanners so he could survey the wider battle. One of the frigates was coming apart. Her reactor breached, but the last cruiser was still on Deus Aurea's tail and inflicting heavy damage. Lee squeezed the trigger and let the torpedo go from extreme range. It was getting hard to stay awake. He fought to make his eyes focus on another screen. The bombers, having spent their payloads, were resorting to kamikaze attacks against engines, weapon systems, sensor pylons, anything that might hold the cruiser. Then came the flash. Something hit the cruiser hard enough to rip her nose clean off. Lee hoped it was his torpedo. Now unsupported, 
the final frigate chose to break off his hunt. The Terrans let her go. Space around Deus Array pulsed. To the naked eye, the ship appeared to be sucked through a hole the size of a pinhead. She was gone, far from the reach of the Quevalar. Lee looked at his command screen. All icons were red. No fighters, no bombers, no escape pods. He smiled, despite the grim news. No Terran battleship has ever. He was too tired to finish the boast. Lee let his eyes slide shut and joined the rest of the ravens.